Radiation is almost ghostly. It is the closest real thing to a haunting. It is a subtle, invisible, and discreet entity that can cause long-term damage to your body. And not just your body, actually. Radiation can also affect the health of your descendants who don't even exist yet. It is the closest thing to a family curse that real life can offer. A curse induced by radiation mutations. That's why this video exists. Today we will explore the most radioactive things in the universe. Some of them emit so much radiation that you wouldn't be able to survive nearby. Come with me. We need to understand the basics. What is radiation? Simply, radiation is any type of energy moving through space. If it carries energy and is in motion, it is radiation, but even though this definition is correct, it is too broad. Therefore, we will focus more in this video and explore the type of radiation that is most dangerous to all living beings, ionizing radiation. Hey, Pedro here. This video you are watching was originally in Portuguese, my native language. This is the attempt of our team to translate it to English, and I sincerely hope you enjoy it. Your feedback is extremely important to us. Now, back to the video. The word ionizing means creating ions. Normally, an atom has equal protons in the nucleus and electrons orbiting it. Protons have a positive charge and electrons have a negative charge. Thus, the atom overall is electrically neutral. But this can change. If an electron absorbs enough energy, it can escape from the atom. As a result, the atom now has one less electron and more positive charge than negative. In other words, it is now a positive ion or a cation. But an atom can also gain an electron and end up with an excess of negative charges, transforming into a negative ion or anion. Ionizing radiation is precisely the type of radiation that carries enough energy to create ions and move electrons within our body. This means that ionizing radiation destroys the molecules in our body, which can trigger chemical reactions that shouldn't happen, causing a series of health issues, ranging from fever and malaise to an increased risk of various types of cancer due to direct and indirect damage to DNA. Non-ionizing radiation, on the other hand, does not cause direct molecular damage, but it can still be dangerous. The ultraviolet radiation that the sun emits is a type of radiation that is not capable of ionizing molecules, but it still causes damage such as burns. In other words, different types of radiation cause different types of damage to the human body. And this is one of the reasons why there are various ways to measure the intensity of radiation. One of these forms measures radioactive activity, which basically answers the question of how many radiation particles the radioactive material emits. This is a physical measure. It does not involve details about how humans are affected by radiation. Another way to characterize radiation is through exposure. Exposure measures how much the radiation ionizes the atmospheric air around us. Exposure is a way to measure the total energy of the radiation being emitted by a body. Two bodies emitting the exact same number of particles, that is, with the same activity, can cause different exposures if the energy of the radioactive particles is different. But the measure of radiation to indicate what is most radioactive today is the dose of radiation. The dose of radiation measures how much of the radiation's energy has been deposited in a human body. And it doesn't depend solely on pure physical considerations, but also on how different types of radiation interact with human tissues. For example, one type of radiation is gamma rays, which are high-energy light capable of ionizing molecules in the human body. Gamma radiation is dangerous because it can penetrate almost any material, making it practically impossible to shield against it. Another type of radiation is alpha radiation, which are nuclei of the element helium fired at high speeds. Alpha particles have two neutrons with neutral electric charge and two protons with positive charge, resulting in a total positive charge. The alpha particle has a much greater ability to interact with the molecules in our body than gamma radiation, precisely because it has an electric charge. All other factors being equal, alpha radiation causes much more damage to the human body than gamma radiation, since it is capable of interacting with our body through electric charges. The different effects of different radiations need to be taken into account for us to understand how dangerous a radioactive material is to a human being. And luckily for us, even though alpha radiation is so dangerous, it is very easy to block. Any type of fabric or even a sheet of paper is enough to block alpha particles. When you see someone in those radiation protection suits in images of Chernobyl or other nuclear accidents, the main function of the suit is to block alpha radiation. That said, what is the most radioactive thing in the universe? The first thing that emits radiation is bananas. Bananas emit a tiny amount of radiation, 0.0000001 sievert, or 0.1 microsieverts. 
Sievert is a measure of radioactive dose and measures how much energy has been deposited in biological materials from radiation. Doses starting from approximately 1 sievert begin to be quite dangerous. 1 sievert is 1 million microsieverts. Or, using a more appropriate scale, you would need to eat 10 million bananas to receive a problematic dose of radiation. The interesting thing here is that almost everything emits at least a little radiation. Just existing in the world makes you receive around 2 millisieverts of radiation per year, equivalent to 20,000 bananas, and this does not cause any noticeable effect on your body. Getting a chest x-ray deposits a radiation dose of 0.05 millisieverts or 500 bananas and is an excellent point of comparison. This is equivalent to 25% of the annual radiation dose you receive just by existing. A single x-ray does not cause problematic radiation damage, but x-ray machine operators are exposed to this radiation repeatedly as part of their job. Therefore, they need to follow safety protocols to avoid damage over the course of a year of work. With our unit and references defined, we can move up our scale of dangerous things. And we are going to start with a book that is basically a cursed book, Marie Curie's Diary. Marie Curie was one of the most important researchers in physics. She made significant advances in the study of radiation. But unfortunately, she lived before we understood the dangers of radiation. Because of this, her work did not follow any safety recommendations. As a result, she essentially spread the radioactive material she used on everything she touched, including her personal diary. One of these materials was radium-226, which has a half-life of 1,600 years. It will take another 1,600 years for the radiation from the radium-226 deposited on the things Marie Curie used and touched daily to have. This means her diary is quite radioactive. If you read her diary for an hour, you would receive 60 MSV of radiation, or the equivalent of 1-200 chest x-rays, or 600,000 bananas. This is not enough to cause immediate harm. But if you were to live with this diary for long periods of time, it would certainly, over time, cause symptoms of acute radiation syndrome. Now, if you really want to suffer from radiation, you need to be more emphatic and go to another place that gives the full impression of being cursed by radiation, Chernobyl. After the Chernobyl reactor failed, part of the radioactive material melted and condensed into an extremely radioactive mass called the elephant's foot. When it first appeared, the elephant's foot was one of the most radioactive objects on the planet. It emitted a dose of one sievert every two seconds. Think about it, 10 million bananas penetrating you every two seconds. The elephant's foot was so radioactive that a single second of exposure was enough to cause symptoms of radiation syndrome, such as skin burns and an increased risk of anemia. 10 seconds of exposure meant approximately a 50% chance of dying within 30 days, the so-called lethal dose 50-30. But since radiation is energy, all radioactive material is losing energy and consequently losing the ability to be radioactive. Today, the elephant's foot is still a very dangerous object, but it is much less radioactive than it was when it formed in 1986. How radioactive the elephant's foot is today is difficult to determine with precision. The Chernobyl zone has extreme safety protocols and no one has a good reason to get so close. But we can estimate how much radiation the elephant's foot produces through a 2015 study. This study measured the radiation of small samples of radioactive materials in Chernobyl. And extrapolating the results for the elephant's foot, it appears about 4,000 times less radioactive today than when it was formed. Instead of 10 million, it's equivalent to just 30,000 bananas hitting you every second. This still means the equivalent of receiving three chest x-rays every second of exposure, which is not healthy. Here's an interesting fact. The elephant's foot was an accident, but there is a much more radioactive object that was made intentionally. This is a gamma ray source based on cobalt-60. It fits in the palm of your hand. And if it were in the palm of your hand, you would be able to read, drop and run. Dropping the cobalt-60 source and running would be your only chance to get out alive. The main reason why this source was extremely dangerous is precisely because of its size. All the radioactive material is well compacted. This means it can get very close to your body, which should never happen in ideal situations. If you managed to read the message, you got close enough to receive more than approximately 50 sieverts of radiation per second. For reference, the lethal dose 5030 is just 5 sieverts. At this point, comparing it to bananas no longer makes any sense. Your chance of death from a 1 second exposure is 99%. Even a few seconds near this cobalt 60 source leads to certain death within 48 hours. Additionally, the death would be quite painful. The symptoms of acute radiation syndrome include losing fluids from all openings, headaches, fever, and neurological damage. And here's the question, why did someone do this? Why would someone create a pill so deadly that it needs to be decorated with a warning to run away if you see it? The answer is that this pellet was not meant to be handled directly up close. 
It is part of specialized equipment that uses gamma rays in a very calculated manner. The uses of the pellet were both for radiotherapy treatments and sterilization, which is basically killing bacteria with radiation, and structural analysis, which is basically taking gamma ray pictures of materials to study them. The cobalt-60 source is definitely the most radioactive thing we humans intentionally produce. There are elements more radioactive than cobalt-60, but they have never been used in sources as radioactive as cobalt has perhaps because they do not produce types of radiation that are useful, or perhaps because they last too short a time to be assembled into a highly radioactive object. This, in fact, is the case with the most radioactive elements ever produced, such as Hydrogen-7 and Organ SN-294. But today's video goes in a different direction. We want to find the most radioactive object, the thing that actually exists in our universe and emits the largest amounts of radiation. And if radiation is energy in motion, we need to look at the events that make energy move the most in the universe. And we certainly have two competitors here, galactic black holes and gamma ray bursts. Black holes are regions of space where gravity is so intense that not even light can escape. And galactic black holes are supermassive black holes that reside at the center of galaxies. The matter falling into these black holes does not fall in a straight line. It falls into spiral orbits. Consequently, an extremely accelerated disk of matter forms around the black hole, which is called an accretion disk. In this sense, black holes are the largest particle accelerators in the universe, and the radiation from the accretion disk is not just light. Much of the radiation is in the form of atomic nuclei moving at high speeds, which is the most dangerous type of radiation possible. The radiation from the accretion disk of a black hole is so intense that even at a distance of 60 million kilometers, you would still be exposed to 20 sieverts of radiation per second. That's about 20,000 full-body X-rays. At 10 million kilometers from the accretion disk, you would be swept by more than 700 sieverts of radiation dose per second, which would cause acute radiation symptoms immediately. And this is almost off the scale for which we have references. And we are still 10 million kilometers away from the black hole, which is 30 times farther than the moon is from Earth. But the true champion of radiation is the gamma ray bursts. Their exact origin is not well determined, but they are probably the result of supernovae, which are explosions of very massive stars. But what really makes this gamma ray burst the most radioactive thing in the universe is the fact that it isn't that explosive. Gamma rays are released in a very directed manner, in two beams in opposite directions, and because of this, the radiation released is much more concentrated than the radiation from an accretion disk, which is scattered in all directions without any criteria. A gamma ray burst tens or hundreds of light years away could potentially cause incredibly dangerous and severe effects for life on Earth if the gamma ray beam were to hit our planet directly, in other words, a gamma ray burst creates a beam of radiation that remains extremely powerful hundreds of light years away. In fact, there are almost 60,000 stars less than 100 light years away from Earth. And if any of them turned into a gamma ray burst, we would have serious problems. This happens precisely because the energy is well directed and travels much farther in space before losing its power. And even at distances of billions of kilometers, you would still receive trillions of sieverts of radiation dose in the form of a concentrated gamma ray beam. That's so much radiation it disassembles the molecules in your body. You would be vaporized at the speed of light. It's so much energy the concept of radiation as something that damages tissues stops making sense. This level of radiation is simply incompatible with the existence of molecules and even atoms. It is likely that the gamma rays would destroy even the nuclei of atoms into their most basic components, neutrons and protons. This event seems completely disconnected from the type of radiation we were studying at the beginning of the video. And that's the point of the video, in a way. Radiation is a restricted word that represents a large number of different phenomena, which have drastically different consequences. From the harmless radiation that your computer or cell phone screen emits now in the form of visible light, to unstable atoms decaying and causing damage to human tissues, or perhaps even highly radioactive pellets that are useful for medicine and materials science. Or if we go to the absolute extreme of the scale, even the radiation from astronomical phenomena that could cause problems even light years away. The moral of the story is that radiation is simply the most fundamental way for energy to move. And consequently, radiation carries both the information about the source of that radiation and the dangers that come with it. Oh, and before the video ends, the radiation dose from a gamma ray burst is simply equivalent to one trillion bananas. There are so many bananas that if you put them all close together, they would turn into a star with nuclear fusion in the core and everything. They would also wipe out any form of life within a few light years. Stay away from astronomical quantities of bananas. Thank you very much and see you next time.